this video we're going to look at some student scheduling concepts and this uh, is in a document called student scheduling and might also be referred to walk-in scheduling the helpful part of the help menu here is there is a quick reference card uh, for student scheduling walk-in called walk-in scheduling there's also a uh, Fujitsu Follett document uh, from my NBC team with um, called student scheduling that has this in detail which has been provided to our counselors and our administrators that do walk-in scheduling if you need one just contact me and I'll get you get you the latest version so to work on a student schedule you need to check off the students you want to work with and these are all the identified students so none of these guys are real and um, check them off and go to schedule this will show you the matrix view or the list view depending on whichever one was the last one that you had and from here you want to go into the workspace so the workspace sub side tab or schedule side tab and we can see some information about the student's schedule the left hand side is your course requests including your primary course alternate and if the student had a secondary school association you would see that information in here as well the right hand side is the actual schedule for the student since I'm doing this video uh, during semester two it defaults to semester two but if you wanted to see it the full year you can see it there and there's a separation that show you what semester oops I didn't want to click on that uh, is there's drag and drop functionality uh, semester one semester two if I can switch to just semester one see that and semester two to see that as well there's uh, a lot of things to know about this and I'm just going to walk through um, buttons and drop down lists. So on the left hand side I have some options right off the bat with my courses and you notice as they hover they show colors. These are where the courses have some kind of schedule. It doesn't necessarily mean they're available there. It depends on uh, maximum sizes etc. Do I have an option right off the bat to allow over max when I try to drag and drop something into the schedule? I will point out that the text that is black means that it's already scheduled at some point in time either in semester one, semester two text that is red means that it has not been scheduled. The red X's here, they are X's, they're not hourglasses. The red X is to delete the uh, course requests out of the left hand side. Red X's on the right hand side or delete them out of the actual schedule. On the left hand side again we have a box to select a course. You can also type in your courses as long as you know the exact code for it to add them in to the course requests you can drop all, this refers to the course requests here, not the actual courses and then you can hit update. This update button is if you've added a course from on this right hand side it'll put it into the course requests which is helpful as you're working to keep track of which courses the student wanted at some point in time. On the right hand side we've seen the term code the work mode manual or auto shuffle. Manual means you can drag and drop things into place auto shuffle means it'll try to move things around for you so if you drag and drop something into period one and you want to get rid of social studies it'll try to reschedule social studies or it just drops it out and puts it back over there allowing conflicts does exactly that you can schedule kids into more than one class in the same block just so you can see everything in the table allow over max again it would be uh, would ignore the maximum rules on the course itself in this school i've got p1 p2 p3 p4 P6 and 7 are outside of their timetable, so I don't see anything in there, but if I wanted to put in, say, a, a GT course or a DPA or something, I'd probably put it in there, depending on what the school's process or procedure is. If I wanted to add something into one of these blocks, I have some options. I can delete this one, double-click on the blank block, and then look at courses that I have that I can add in period one in semester one, or change it to period one, semester two, um, I do have a reschedule button here that I'll try to reschedule this, but since I've got a more or less complete schedule, it's not going to change much, not that I believe. I've got a lock all button. This would actually lock all the courses, so when you hit reschedule, it won't move anything. But if you wanted to make sure that only this one was locked because you don't want to change it, you can click on the lock, hit reschedule, it'll try to change other things based on your course requests and what's available. Drop all does exactly that, so be careful. It will drop everything that you see. And select is similar to this one, but instead of adding it to the course requests, it will add it in to the actual schedule. You have a spot here to add courses directly into the schedule. And right onto the right hand side, there's two more buttons that you need to know about. 
post is actually completing the schedule change. This is like saving the schedule and it's saying this is the student's new schedule. Revert will go back to the last posted schedule. So since I haven't hit the post button yet, I can hit revert. It'll make it'll ignore any changes I've made gone back to the last posted schedule. But if I hit post and then immediately after I hit revert, it's not going to do anything because it goes to the last posted schedule. So let's say I want to try to put this geology course in someplace. The color, let's say hover over it, it's a little bit finicky. And uh, it'd be great if that worked better, but it just is what it is. So I'm seeing this as likely that it's available in P4. And there's ways I can check that. And so what I'm going to do is to say, oh, the student doesn't want to do calculus it's anymore. It's 11 o'clock. I'm going to try to push uh, geology into there. Um, so I'm going to delete this one. Let's just say I really child doesn't want it anymore. I'm going to remove it. Again, no warning. It's gone now. It does put it back over here into my course requests, which is great. I'm going to try to drag and drop this one in, see if it allows me. And it did. There wasn't any warnings, there wasn't a max or anything like that. And if I'm happy with this, I can hit the post button. Another way to do this, I'm going to remove the course. Again, pops over the course requests. I can double click on the hole in the schedule and then look through my courses that are available. This is one spot in my Education BC where a wildcard does exist and does work, and it's a star, and then 12. So what this will do, if I hit enter, <clears throat> it will show me all courses that have a grade 12 in it. So something star 12. I can pick the period, which since I double clicked, it already picked it for me, which is nice. I can pick the term, I only want to see S2, and then I can see all the courses that are available, period 4, day 1, S2. I've got my maxes in there. I can see if anything's available. And I did want that, uh, that geology class. I've got enough space in there. I'm going to check it, hit add, and that fills it in. So there's another way that you can fill in courses um, through the double click on a blank schedule. So you can delete it, double click. You can also allow conflicts and drag and drop. So I could do this and put it in there. If there's no warnings, oh, it says I've it's reached its max. So that calculus class may have been uh, just full with, uh, with that student in there, so I might need to post this to remove the student from that class before I can put them in. But it is possible to um, double book, and I did it there, I said ignore all the warnings, because I could look at these now and decide, the student could decide which one do we actually want to take. Oh, we really do want to take pre-calc, let's get rid of geology now. Post. To make the changes permanent. If the student had no schedule whatsoever, um, so the left hand side was blank, or if the left hand side is blank and there is a schedule, you can always hit the update and this will take the, the courses from here and push them over onto the left hand side. But if the student had just come in off the street and uh, they've been registered and they've gone through the whole process to register and you needed to make courses for them, you have the options of filling in course requests first and then trying to use the, the schedule button, the reschedule button. It will try to place them as best it can uh, or you can drag and drop them in or if you want to you can add them in uh, individually by double clicking on the blank space, figuring out the course you want in period one, double click here to figure out the course, double click there to figure out the course, double click there. And the important thing is if you do it this way, hit the update button because then it will add in the course requests over here. So if you do need to make changes, you can at least see that at some point in time you had them in there. So important thing again, hit the post button um, to do this. Uh, to make sure you, your changes are saved. If you see an asterisk, you have to hit post to save it. You, this is also available in a list view, just a little bit different view. You don't have drag and drop, you don't have colors, but you do have a lot of the similar buttons. This is a schedule, these are the course requests. If I wanted to try to add this, again you can see it's not currently in the schedule, I can try to click add and see what happens. Um, so just a different way of looking at it. This is a list view, the other way is the matrix view. The, uh, that help quick reference card for this goes over that a little bit. And the documents that I've shared to counselors are in thorough detail about all of this. I'm going to skip over and just look at two other things here. One is change history. 
and change history shows all the different um, changes, ads and drops, and who did them as well, which is quite nice. So see who's been playing with the trains. Uh, there's another one called Conflicts, which would be helpful. Uh, the one thing to note from here, you can't do any scheduling from the Conflicts subside tab, but you can look and see some information about courses and where else they could fit. So I've got a Biology 12. I'm scheduled in here. There's a legend right up there. Oh, didn't want that to open up. Um, it says scheduled. Other courses that say O are open. Or C, it's they're closed because there's no seats available. Or U is unavailable for some other reason. I'm not sure why it says unavailable. But. So I could see where this Ministry English 11 course could also go. So this is useful for information, but it doesn't allow you to do any scheduling that I'm aware of. Uh, requests has to do for next year with builds, so just skip that for the 2016, which is 2015-16 school year for us, um, for now. And graduation progress will actually show you the students' progress towards graduation, credits completed, etc. There's more below that I can't show in the video right now. But that is a, a quick look at how to change the student schedules in the student top tab, select the student schedule, side tab and workspace.